Remove the frame by inserting a flathead screwdriver into the slot and lifting it away from the unit. Remove the central body from the plastic spacer by inserting the flathead screwdriver under the tab at the bottom of the central body. Batteries are located at the rear of the unit. Two AAA batteries are required to power the unit. Place the Lightwave RF device you want to link the PIR to in linking mode. For information on how to do this, please refer to the instruction manual for that specific device. You have 12 seconds in which to complete the link. Linking is carried out using the slider on the back, labelled Learn. Move the slider to its opposite position. It's possible to link the PIR to as many Lightwave RF devices as you want, as long as they are within a 10 to 15 metre range. The LED on the target device will flash to confirm that the PIR is linked. Once linked, moving the Learn slider to the position labelled 1 will turn on any link devices when the PIR is triggered. Moving the slider to the 1-0 position will turn on link devices, but also send an off command after a customizable delay period. To set the delay period, use the time delay slider. It has four positions, corresponding to 5 seconds, 1 minute, 5 minutes and 10 minutes. The delay countdown will begin once movement is no longer detected, after the initial on command has been sent. To determine the light level at which the PIR will become active, use the LUX slider labelled HML. In position H, the PIR will be active at all light levels. In position M, the PIR will only become active at low daylight levels. In position L, the PIR will only become active in darkness or very low light. When adjusting the LUX setting, it may take up to 30 seconds for the PIR to acclimatise to the new setting. Once the PIR has been linked and the settings adjusted, it can be mounted in its final position. The PIR can be fixed to a back box or to any suitable flat surface using the adhesive strips provided. The adhesive strips provided are used to stick just the base section, which holds the main body of the sensor, to the wall. Don't apply them to the main body as you may need to get to the back to change batteries and adjust settings. Replace the main unit back into position and clip the retaining faceplate back into place. Make sure that the faceplate hooks in from the top first. A sharp click will indicate that the plate has been successfully replaced. If using the adhesive strips, once they are attached to the base section, simply attach the PIR to the wall. You can tell if the battery is getting low because there's a battery low indicator positioned inside the lens. If the battery is low, this indicator will blink to tell you that the batteries need changing. Once in position, you can adjust the detection angle. This will determine the area in which the presence of movement will trigger the PIR. This angle can be altered by adding the lens covers supplied that partially cover the sensor lens. Vertically, the maximum detection angle is always 65 degrees. Horizontally, the maximum detection angle is 80 degrees without lens covers and 20 degrees with the lens covers. The lens covers can be cut in order to alter the angle of detection. The more that is cut away, the wider the detection angle. Full instructions on how to do this are included in the manual that comes with the unit.